Yo, it's Lux from Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to install and use the modern LWC plugin to protect your blocks. This plugin allows you to protect blocks such as chests, furnaces, and doors. It has many features such as having password protections, different flags such as the magnet flag, as well as different modes too. So let's quickly install the plugin, head over to the plugin section on the left, go over to the spigot section over here and type modern LWC just like so. Install the latest version and restart your server. In game you can type slash LWC to see what commands are available to use. Let's place a chest. As you can see, when we do that, it automatically becomes privately protected. You can of course disable this feature in the config so that the person must manually protect the chests themselves. Let's remove the automatic protection on this chest by typing slash C remove and then right clicking or punching the chest. Make sure to right click or punch the chest you want for the changes to be made after typing the command, like I did just now. This is the same going forward with all the other commands too. Okay, so there are three protection types. First is the public one, and it's added by typing slash C public. This allows for anyone to access the chest, as you can see, but it makes it so that other players can't protect the chest themselves. This is mostly useful for things like community chests. The second is the private protect, which is added by typing slash C private. This makes the chest only accessible by you or by the people or groups you specify. So let's say you want to add someone else to the list and give them access to the chest. Type slash C modify and then the username and then select the chest. You can see now that from a different account, I can also access the chest. Of course, like I mentioned before, you can add entire permission groups as well and not just players. With slash C info, you can view the information about the protected block and you can see the people or groups who have access to the chest here. Let's say I want to remove the player from the list. All I have to do is type in slash C modify, then a little dash or a minus sign and then the player name. And as you can see, the player has been removed. Then we have the password protection, which is added by typing slash C password and then the password. So basically this means anyone who has the password can access the chest, as you can see here. Use the command slash C unlock to enter the password for that chest. Of course, like I mentioned before, you can protect any blocks. For example, let's protect this door and this furnace. And as you can see on my other account, I can access them because I just privately protected them and only I have the permission to use them. You can also do other cool things like add flags. So for example, we can add a magnet flag to this chest just by typing slash LWC flag, then the flag name, which is magnet, and then whether you want it on and off. In this case, I want it on. Now when I drop items which are close to the chests with this flag on, they will automatically be sucked up into the chest and collected by it. If you want to change the radius, of course, you can do this in the magnet.yml config file. Another cool feature of this plugin is the a drop transfer mode. It makes it so that when you drop items, they will automatically go into the linked chest. To do this, type slash LWC, then mode, then the mode name, and then select. Select the chest you want to link to. And after that, type slash LWC mode drop transfer on and that will turn on the drop transfer mode. And now, as you can see, when I drop items, they automatically go into the chest. And of course, you can disable this mode just by typing slash LWC mode drop transfer and off. Note that you can't drop items across dimension or worlds. However, you can actually enable that feature in the config. This plugin has even more features, so we highly recommend that you take a look at the plugin page and the wiki page. Links can be found down in the description. Let's quickly go over the config now. Locate core.yml file in the plugin folder and here you can change a bunch of stuff. 
You can disable and enable notice messages. You can do things like only protect chests when the owner of the protected blocks are either online or offline. You can change the storage type, such as using the MySQL database. You can deny redstone and hoppers if you wanted. You can ignore a bunch of things like explosions. If you don't want protection notices at all, you can enable quiet mode so that they don't show up. Of course, you also have a big list of blocks that can be protected and you can enable and disable those as you wish. And again, if you don't know what something means, go check out the wiki as the annotated version is there and everything is explained there for you. If we go and take a look at the other configs, you can find things to do with doors. This config is annotated and explains it well, so I'm not gonna go through it. Then the limits config basically allows you to create groups and limit the amount of protected blocks a player can have. And then the magnet config allows you to change the radius like I mentioned previously and some other things too as you can see. And that's about it. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any plugin suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you have any issues with anything, contact our support team. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.